This is an update on the earthquakes in Japan and Ecuador, as well as some of the activity on the Ring of Fire. Anyways, the um, death toll did rise in Japan, unfortunately. 42 people have died and over a 1,000 were injured in the quakes on Thursday and early Saturday. And unfortunately, over here in Ecuador, things are even worse. So far, there's the death toll is at 413 and is expected to rise. Um, 2,600 people injured, 18,000 people spending the night in shelters. So things have been pretty active. And we're going to go here. Where it's talking about the Japan and Ecuador quakes hit in seismically active ring of fire. While earthquakes happen all the time, some parts of the world are more susceptible than others, particularly in the ring of fire, a band of volcanoes and fault lines circling the edges of the Pacific Ocean. Down here, this question was posed to an expert. We saw earthquakes of magnitudes exceeding 7.0 strike Japan and within hours also Ecuador. Is there any connection between the two? The answer? The conventional wisdom is no. The earthquakes on either side of the Pacific are on different tectonic plates, so far removed from each other that we don't have any physical mechanism that we would think would explain that they are connected. Having said that, over the last decade, we have had a number of similar occurrences where large earthquakes have occurred very close in time, so I think the weekend's earthquakes will cause us to do a bit of rethinking. But my gut feeling is that these occurrences are coincidences. Well, let's come over here. So over here we see that the Mexican volcano started erupting around 2.30 a.m. on Monday. So we had Ecuador and we had Japan and then this here. And as you can see, it was pretty big. It spewed ash all over. People were walking around covering their faces. It looks pretty nasty. Anyways, I have a one of my very best friends in the whole world had mentioned he has this theory on the Ring of Fire, and he was like, after the Japan and Ecuador, he's like, Mexico's going to get hit next. And he's like, okay, I'm going out on a limb. After the Mexican thing happened on Monday, um, he's like, I think Alaska's going to go next. So that's just a little, we'll see if that happens. But, well, let's go over here. And here we have, could a super volcano under Yellowstone National Park erupt soon? Odds? Are not likely. Scientists do believe that it will erupt again one day, but they don't know when. But the reality is that uh, seismologists believe that one day there will be a strong earthquake like the 7.3 that hit the area in 1959. So while you see it buzzing a lot on the internet, on YouTube, probably because it gets views and clicks, it says before you get alarmed, scientists say that the chance of a supervolcano erupting in Yellowstone is quite small. 1 in 73,000 to be exact. The more imminent threat from this area would be from a large earthquake, like the one in 1959. So we're going to go look here. So here we're looking at the Ring of Fire, and you can see how active it is. So if you live anywhere in this area or in a seismically active area, don't worry about super volcanoes. Be prepared. Have some food. Have some water. Know how to turn off your gas, because these are the things that you need to think about. So whether my friend's right and Alaska's going to have a big earthquake or it's going to be anywhere, just remember, be prepared.